I maintain that many of us had no choice to do what we tried to do primarily because at an early age we recognized the wrong under which we were forced to live and we swore to God that by God's grace we would do whatever God called us to do in order to put on the table of the nation's agenda. This must end. Black Lives Matter. And so between 1953 and 1973, we had major campaigns year after year, thousands of demonstrations across the nation that supported it. We had folk in the Congress, folk in the White House, uh, folks got scattered across the United States who were beginning to formulate what the solutions are for change. The media makes a mistake when John is seen only in relationship to the Voting Rights Bill of 65. However important that is, you must not remember that in the 60s, Lyndon Johnson and the Congress of the United States passed the most advanced legislation on behalf of we, the people of the United States, that was ever passed. Head Start, billions of dollars for housing, we would not be in the struggle we are today in housing if President Reagan hadn't cut that billions of dollars for housing, where local churches and local nonprofits could build affordable housing in their own communities, being sustained and financed by loans from the federal government. We passed Medicare. We passed anti-poverty programs. Civil Rights Bill 64, 65, voting rights bills, a whole array. John Lewis must be understood as one of the leaders of the greatest advance of Congress in the White House on behalf of we, the people of the USA. We do not need bipartisan politics if we're going to celebrate the life of John Lewis. We need the Constitution to come alive. We hold these truths to be self-evident. We need the Congress and the presidents to work unfaltering on behalf of every boy and every girl so that every baby born on these shores will have access to the tree of life. That's the only way to honor John Robert Lewis. Let all of us in this service today, let all the people of the USA determine that we will not be quiet as long as any child dies in the first year of life in the United States. We will not be quiet as long as the largest poverty group in our nation are women and children. We will not be quiet as long as our nation continues to be the most violent culture in the history of humankind. We will not be quiet as long as our economy is shaped not by freedom, but by plantation capitalism that continues to cause domination and control rather than access and liberty and equality for all. The forces of spiritual wickedness are strong in our land because of our history. We have not created them. John Lewis did not create them. We inherited them. But it's our task to see those spiritual forces. I've named them racism, sexism, violence, plantation capitalism. Those poisons still dominate far too many of us in many different ways. John's life was a singular journey from birth <laughs> through the campaigns in the South and through Congress to get us to see that these forces of wickedness must be resisted. Do not let our own hearts drink any of that poison. Instead, drink the truth of the life force. If we would honor and celebrate John Lewis's life, let us then recommit our souls, our minds, our hearts, our bodies, our strength to the continuing journey to dismantle 
the wrong in our midst and to allow a space for the new earth and new heaven to emerge. I'm Egberto Willis, host of Politics Done Right, an independent news program. I post several news videos of interest every day. I ask you so kindly to subscribe to my channel and please leave me some comments. Thank you very much.